Welcome everyone. How you doing? Gosh, I can never tell if it's alive yet or not. So hello. Welcome. Okay, the live sticker is on the screen now. I think we're good to go. Thanks for joining. My name is Mackenzie and I'm going to be guiding you through our PodFlow 1 sequence. So I'm excited. I have kind of taken the last couple of days off of doing yoga, so I'm ready to get back on my mat and move my body a little bit. Um, it's kind of dreary outside, which I enjoy that kind of weather. I spent many years, well, about four years living in Seattle in the Pacific Northwest. So this kind of weather kind of reminds me of living back there makes me miss it a little bit. So thanks for joining on. I see a couple eyeballs. I think we got a couple people hopping on to do some yoga. So if you're on and you're watching, say hello. Let me know how the sound and the lighting is. Um, I hopped on a few minutes early so I could make sure it's all set up. And um, I did attach a Spotify playlist. So if you like to listen to music when you flow, which I enjoy doing, um, go ahead and click that link and it will take you to um, the playlist that I created and you can also find me on Spotify just my first and last name Mackenzie shampoo and I have a ton of um, playlists open for the public so um, before we get started though I'm going to kind of chat about the props so you could use a couple props in class today if you want um, you can certainly modify and do these all of these postures without any sort of props. But if you like to utilize props, which I think they're very helpful, um, not necessarily um, to allow you to take the pose down a notch, but it will actually allow you to get deeper into a lot of the postures. Um, so first one is going to be a strap. If you have a strap, I would recommend grabbing that. Um, however, you could use something around the house if you don't have straps. So if you have a belt in, of any kind, or even like a scarf, like a winter scarf, or any kind of strapping material would be fine as well. Um, feel free, you can push pause and run and grab that if you want. Also, a block may come in handy. Um, if you don't have an actual yoga block though, you could use like a thick book, or a couple books on top of each other, or even I've used before like a can of soup, really anything that's just gonna give you a little bit of height. We're not gonna be putting too much pressure on the block, it's simply just bringing the floor a little bit up closer to you. So those may come in handy. Um, and also, if you see me playing with my phone, it's because I am gonna be playing music for myself because I'm gonna be flowing through this. I like to kind of get lost in the music a little bit, so. I'm not texting anybody. I'm just maybe like taking the volume up or down. So let's get started here. Don't mind me, take off my slippers. So I'm gonna have you come seated towards the top of your mat here. So coming into what we call Sukhasana in Sanskrit, but it's just an easy seated pose. So you could come with your legs crossed, think crisscross applesauce legs with, you know, one foot in front of the other. Both feet are resting on the ground, so you're not stacking them. Or you could come into what's called a hero's pose, where you're resting on the top of your shins and your hips and your glutes rest down onto your heels. So the option is yours. Whichever way you are taking it though, go ahead and just place your hands on the top of your knees or your thighs. We'll gaze out in front of you and then lower your eyelids here. Go ahead and close your eyes. And just settle in here to your space. Take notice of your breath. I don't necessarily want you to change anything about your breath, just take notice of how deep or shallow your breath may be. Do you tend to hold your breath way up high in your chest? Are they short inhalations and exhalations? Just take notice.
coming into some stillness, some silence at the beginning of practice. Lifting up through the crown of your head, though, we want to lengthen through our spine as we root into our sits bones. If you're holding any tension up in your shoulders, maybe your shoulders are up towards your ears, go ahead and loosen them down. Go ahead and just drop them, glide them down. And then we're going to start to take notice of our breath here. So we're going to find Samavriti, which is equal part breath. So go ahead and release your breath out, let it go. We're going to inhale for a count of four through your nose for four, three, two, one. We're going to hold at the top for four, three, two, one. And then exhale through your nose for four, three, two, one. Now hold at the bottom for three, two, one. So that was a complete round of Samavriti equal part breath. So four counts in, four counts holding at the top, four count exhalation, and then four count holding at the bottom. So we're gonna move through a few more rounds. You can move with me if you would like. Inhale for four, three, two, one. Hold for four, three, two, one. Exhale for four, three, two, one. And hold for four, three, two, one. Inhale for four, three, two, one. Hold at the top for four, three, two, one. Exhale for four, three, two, one. And hold at the bottom for three, two, one. So you can keep moving with that if you would like. It is a really great way to calm your central nervous system. So come back to the Samavritti, this equal part breath. When you are moving beyond your mat out into the real world, as you find yourself maybe getting stressed out, coming back, finding that balance within your breath, finding that connection with your breath and your body and your mind. Now we're gonna move with our breath here. Inhale, reach your arms overhead. Moving slowly, eventually bringing your palms to touch. Exhale, draw your palms through together, heart center. Two more rounds here. Inhale, reach up through your fingers, guiding them up to the sky. Exhale, press your palms together, draw your thumbs down to your chest. Last one, inhale, fill up, reach. And exhale, draw your hands to heart center. Beautiful, let's begin our practice here. Go ahead and shift forward into tabletop. So you want your wrists under your shoulders, your knees under your hips, and find a neutral spine here to begin with. So think top of your head reaching towards the front of the space. And your hips reaching back behind you. Now we're going to move with our breath. Inhale for cow. Draw your gaze up, filling up your lungs as you view towards the sky. Exhale for cat. Press the mat away here. You're going to tuck your chin. You're going to curl your spine. Inhale for cow. Draw your belly in. Gaze up, soften through your elbows. And exhale, press the mat away for cat. Pressing through your wrists and through your knees. One more round here, inhale, cow, slowly gaze up, dropping your belly, shine through your collarbone. Exhale, cat, press it away, find that flexion here through your spine. <laughs> now move through two rounds here at your own pace. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. One more round. And exhale. 
Inhale, come back to neutral spine, tabletop position. Go ahead and curl your toes. Walk your hands forward slightly. And on your exhale, downward facing dog. So press the mat away from you here. Send your hips up high to the sky. Now you want to find a big white grip through your fingers. So as if you're almost palming like a volleyball, find a big white grip, pressing up through the center of your palms, elongating through your armpits, through your elbows. Draw your shoulders down your back, send your hips high. Now always know you can find a slight bend through your knees at any time when you're in your downward facing dog. You'll eventually work your heels down towards the ground as you find a little bit of flexibility, but be okay with where you're at today. Now keep breathing here. One more round of breath. Building strength through your arms. Now inhale, gaze to the top of your mat, maybe bend your knees. And exhale with small steps, walk your feet towards your hands, top of the mat. Now your head is hanging heavy here. We're in a forward fold, so you're gazing back behind you. Maybe swinging from side to side. Just kind of play around with your movement here. First forward fold of the day. You should be feeling a stretch along your entire back side of your body. So your back, your low back, your glutes, your hips, your hamstrings should all be opening up. Bend your knees as much as needed. Feet about hip width distance. Inhale, sorry, drop your hands down to the ground. Inhale, halfway lift. Keep your fingers on the ground. Lengthen through your spine. Gaze out in front of you. Exhale, fold forward. Let your heart pour over your thighs. Two more times. Inhale, halfway lift. Draw your fingers to your shins. This time, lengthen through the top of your head. Hug your belly in. Exhale, fold forward. Last one. Inhale, halfway lift. Maybe fingers come to your thighs this time. Lift up, shine through your heart. Exhale, fold forward. Root to rise, inhale, slowly come up to standing. Arms will reach overhead, filling up your lungs. Palms come to touch. Exhale, hands through, heart center. Draw your thumbs to your chest. Go ahead and close your eyes. So standing here at attention, again, feet hip width distance. Engage through your legs. Hug in through your low belly. Lift through the top of your head. Now we're going to move with our breath. Inhale, extended mountain. Reach, fill up your lungs. Exhale, hands through, heart center. Draw your thumbs to your chest. Last one. Inhale, extended mountain. Reach, bringing your palms together. Exhale, this time fold forward. So hinge at your hips. Keep a flat spine, so move slow the whole way down. Eventually dropping your head and your hands down to the ground, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, draw your shoulders, your elbows to the back of the space, lengthen through your spine. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, extended mountain, root to rise. Exhale, hands through, heart center. Samastikiti, standing at attention. Inhale, extended mountain, reach. Exhale, fold forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, halfway lift. Option to bring your fingers to the mat or your shins. Exhale, fold forward. Last one. Inhale, extended mountain. Exhale, hands through, heart center. Inhale, extended, Urdhva Hasasana. Exhale, hands through, heart centers. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, move into your plank. So plant your hands, step back into your high plank here. So we're holding here for about 30 seconds. Now we're going to be kind of finding our foundation. So our wrists are directly under shoulders. 
You don't want to sink down into your shoulder blades. So press them out away from you so much that you almost puff up right in between your shoulder blade area. Hug in through your midline here. So if you notice your hips are up high, draw them to center. If your hips are sinking down low, bring them back up in line with your heels and your shoulders. Knees are lifted off the ground here. If you are shaking, go ahead and embrace those shakes here. You're building strength. One more inhale here. And exhale, go ahead and drop to your knees and take a seat. Give yourself a little break here. So I'm gonna move through what a chaturanga dandasana is. So we move through a lot of chaturangas through class. And hey mom. <laughs> um, there are many ways that you can move through this chaturanga. So it essentially means, what chaturanga dandasana means in Sanskrit is high plank to low plank. So we want to keep our body as long and straight like a plank as we can. So we always start our chaturangas in our high plank. We were just there. That's why we want to build strength every time we're holding on our high plank. Now, the first option I'm gonna show is the modified variation. So drop your knees where you are at. You are at an extended tabletop. So usually we guide you to bring your knees below your hips. But if you're moving from a high plank, dropping your knees, your knees are behind your hips. So you're an extended tabletop. You are ready to go here. Inhale, shift forward slightly. You can see the slight tuck of my tailbone as I guide my chest forward. And then exhale, lower down. So you're using the strength of your arms. You're keeping your elbows hugged into your belly as you lower down. So from here, our chin is on the mat, hands under our shoulders. We're rooting our toes into the ground so much that your knees may lift. Now we're gonna move through cobra here. Inhale, cobra, lift your head, your neck, your upper back. Draw your shoulders and elbows back behind you. And exhale, lower, chin to the mat. Inhale, press up tabletop. Curl your toes, exhale, downward facing dog. So that is the modified variation. I am going to encourage everybody to do the modified variation for a whole class or two or three or four. Do it for as long as you can. Really build that strength. You're still building strength as you lower down, whether or not your knees are lifted or not. And a lot of people will do the fullest variation because they don't want to look or seem weak to others or themselves. So they push themselves to do that fullest variation. And then sometimes they'll end up injuring themselves. So it's not really worth it to injure yourself. Just move beyond the ego, drop to your knees. I still do it for my knees often and I'm still building up strength. So be okay with that. Now, fullest variation. Once you have done enough chaturangas from your knees that you have built up enough strength to do the fullest variation, you're gonna start on your high plank and instead of dropping your knees, you're keeping your knees lifted here. You're gonna inhale, shift forward slightly. So before when we were on our knees, when we shifted forward, it tucked our tailbone. Here, it's drying our shoulders a little bit over our wrists so that when we lower down halfway, we have proper alignment. Shift forward with your gaze, with your heart, and exhale, lower down halfway. You can see I'm hugging my elbows in, my body is long and straight like a board. Tops of your feet root to the ground, lengthen through your arms, upward facing dog. Your hips and knees are lifted, shoulders drop down your back. And exhale, use your core to pike your hips high for downward facing dog. So anytime I guide through Chaturanga, move through whatever variation you would like. Always know you can skip. You can just hold on your high plank or tabletop and meet us in downward facing dog. So let's meet in down dog and let's move through some sun salutations. Take a deep breath here in downward facing dog. Inhale, gaze to the top of your mat, bend your knees. Exhale, step your feet to your hands, top of the mat. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold, let it go. Inhale, extended mountain, root to rise, bird behastasana. Exhale, hands through, heart center. Draw your thumbs to your chest, press your palms together. Inhale, extended mountain, reach. 
Exhale, fold forward, Uttanasana. So keep the flat spine, send your hips back, work your chest out in front of you. Inhale, halfway lift. Again, knees can stay bent, lengthen through your chest. Exhale, plant your hands, step back into high plank. Now your variation of Chaturanga, use your exhale to lower down. Inhale, upward facing dog or cobra. And exhale, downward facing dog is where we'll meet. Beautiful job, yogis. Inhale, right leg high, three-legged dog. Exhale, step through to your right thumb here. So your right knee is over your right ankle. Find a good foundation here. Fingers root into the earth. Left knee is lifted. You're gazing out in front of you. We're here on an inhale. Exhale, pyramid variation. Straighten your right leg. So if both legs are long and straight. You want to keep as flat as a spine as you can. Stretching behind your hamstring. Inhale, lunge, bend your right knee, gaze forward. Exhale, pyramid variation, straighten your right leg, fold forward. Last one, inhale, lunge. And exhale, pyramid. Inhale, back to lunge. And exhale, high plank, plant your hands, step back into your high plank. Move through your chaturanga, high plank down to low plank or lower to your belly. Inhale, cobra or upward facing dog. And exhale, downward facing dog is where we'll meet. Deep breath here. Exhale it out. Inhale, left leg high, three-legged dog. Kick back through your left heel. Exhale, lunge, step through to your left thumb. We're here for an inhale, gaze out in front of you. Exhale, pyramid variation, straighten your left leg. Hinge at your hips, inhale, lunge, bend through the left knee. Exhale, pyramid. Opening up through the back side of your left leg and hamstring, inhale, lunge. Exhale, pyramid variation. Inhale, back to lunge, moving with your breath. Exhale, step back, high plank. Inhale. Exhale, lower, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog or cobra. And exhale, downward facing dog. Breathe in here together. And exhale, let it go. One more breath. Exhale. Moving along, inhale, right leg high, three-legged dog. Exhale, knee to nose. Shift your shoulders over your wrist. Press them out away from you. Inhale, kick back, three-legged dog. Exhale, step between your hands this time. So we're setting up for warrior two. Go ahead and pivot your back foot so it's parallel to the back end of the mat. Inhale, rise up, warrior two. Draw your arms to a T and find a deep, generous bend here through your right knee. Find your breath. Take notice here of your right knee. Is it drawing in towards your big toe? If so, draw it out behind you towards your pinky toe of your right foot. Gaze down, you should have heel to arch alignment, heel of your front foot in line with the arch of your back foot. Keep breathing, hug in through your low belly, inhale. Exhale, sink a little bit deeper through your right knee. Inhale, reverse warrior. So low, low body stays the same. You're gonna draw your right hand back behind you. But you don't wanna draw in through your right shoulder. So wrap your right shoulder back behind. Work your right hand and fingers towards the wall back behind you, stretching through your right side body. Keeping that bend in your right knee. Hold here. 
Inhale, arms to a T. Exhale, extend to side angle. So work your right fingers forward as much as you can. When you can no longer go, tick tock your arms, six and 12. So your right hand comes to the inside of your right knee here. You're working your right arm and knee back behind you, opening up through your left shoulder. Again, keeping that bend in your right knee. Breathe here and hold. Inhale, rise up, arms to a T, feet parallel. So toes are out in front of us. We're lengthening through the top of our head on that inhale. And exhale, prasarita padatanasana, hinge at your hips. Keep a flat spine as you hinge all the way forward. I usually will hear a couple cracks out of my hips as I'm hinging. Now from here, you're at a wide leg forward fold. So let the top of your head work towards the ground. Take your gaze back behind you. Now notice here your feet. You wanna shift just a little bit of your weight into the balls of your feet. And this is gonna bring your hips directly over your ankles. And shifting just a little bit of the weight forward, drop your hands under your shoulders. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold, let it go. We're gonna do that again. Inhale, halfway lift. And then reach your right arm with you, twisting to the right. So right fingers extend towards the ground. One round of breath, inhale. And exhale, drop your right hand down to the ground, let it go. Inhale, halfway lift and twist to the left this time, drawing your left fingers up to the sky. And exhale, drop it down, let your head hang heavy. Inhale, halfway lift again. Exhale, lunge to the front of the space. So creep and curl to your right, bend your right knee coming back into a lunge. Now I'm switching it up just a little bit here. So we're here in a lunge. Our feet are on two separate train tracks here, slight gap in between our feet. We're gonna inhale, rise up, crescent lunge. Reach your arms up high to the sky. Keep that bend in that right knee. So your left heel is lifted here just a little bit. This allows you to find a little bit more length through that left leg. Keep breathing, inhale. Exhale, airplane your arms, swoop your arms down and back. Keep the bend in the right knee, keep your chest lifted, work your elbows towards each other. Inhale, crescent proper, reach up high through your fingers, Anjana Asana. Exhale, open arm, twist to the right, draw your right hand back behind you. Deep twist through your spine, Keeping the bend through your right knee. One more inhale. Hold for your exhale. Inhale, crescent lunge to the front of the space, Anjana Asana. Exhale, lunge, plant your hands, step back into high plank. Now move here through your chaturanga. Here on an inhale, exhale, lower halfway or all the way down. Inhale, upward facing dog or cobra, shine your chest. And exhale, curl your toes, send your hips high, downward facing dog. Deep breath together, inhale. And exhale, let it go. Inhale, left leg high, three-legged dog, kick back through your left heel. And exhale, step through to lunge. I'm sorry, right in between your hands this time. Drop your right heel so it's parallel to the back end of the mat. Now right here, you can see that heel of your front foot in line with the arch of your back foot. Inhale, rise up, warrior two. Settle in here on your exhale. Keep the bend through your left knee. Draw the top of your head up towards the sky and then soften through your shoulders. Maybe you gaze out over your fingers. 
on the left hand, hold here. Inhale, reverse warrior. Low body stays the same. Draw your left hand back behind you, stretching through your left side body. You're building strength here in the low body. You want to keep the bend in the left knee. Draw that left knee towards the pinky edge of your foot. Little to no weight here in the right hand. One more inhale. Hold for your exhale. Inhale, arms to a T. Exhale, extended side angle. Reach forward and take tuck your arms. So you're finding a lot of length and opening through the right side body. You want to make sure not to collapse into that left side of the body. So hug up through the obliques on the left side. Draw your left fingers down to the toe of your left foot. Right fingers reach up high. One more inhale. Hold for your exhale. Inhale, rise up, arms to a T, feet parallel, shine through your chest and the top of your head. Exhale, prasarita, padatanasana, wide leg forward fold. Keep a flat spine. Hinge slowly. The whole way down. Your head will eventually reach towards the ground. Gaze back behind you here. Now again, shift just a little bit of the weight into the soles of your feet, hands under your shoulders. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, lunge the front of the space. So bend your left knee here. Creep and crawl to the left. Your feet are on two separate train tracks. There's a bend through your left knee. Inhale, rise up, crescent lunge on Janayasana. Reach up through your fingers here, hug in through your low belly. Now, when we say hug in, we don't mean suck in, but find that engagement. Draw your belly button back to your spine, engaging through the low part of your belly. Lift up through your right heel. Find a deeper bend through your left knee, your left knee. Inhale here, maybe you gaze up. Exhale, airplane your arms, swoop them down and back. Now palms face the ground here. Hug your elbows and shoulders towards the back, the midline of your back, and keep bend through your left knee. Chest stays lifted. Your left knee may be shaking like mine is. Inhale, crescent proper. Exhale, open arm twist to the left. So feel this twist in your mid to upper spine. Draw your left hand back behind you. Reach through your fingers to the front and back of the space. One more inhale. Stay here for your exhale. Awesome work, yogis. Inhale, Anjaneyasana Crescent, front of the space. And exhale, plant your hands. Step back into high plank and chaturanga. Exhale, lower halfway or all the way. Inhale, upward facing dog or cobra, shine through your chest. And exhale, downward facing dog is where we'll meet. Take an inhale together. Exhale, let it go, press the mat away, send your hips up a little bit more. Now we're gonna link those movements together. So we were holding for about three to five counts within each posture. So now we're going to pick up the pace. We're gonna move from one breath, one breath, one movement, flowing throughout that vinyasa flow. So starting downward facing dog, inhale, right leg high, three-legged dog. Exhale, knee to nose. Shift your shoulders over your wrist, press them out of way. Inhale, kick back, three-legged dog. Exhale, stepping between your hands. Inhale, rise up, warrior two. And exhale, just settle in here. Sink a little bit deeper through your right knee. Inhale, reverse warrior. Exhale, extended side angle. Inhale, rise up, 
arms to a T, feet are parallel. Exhale, prasarita, padatanasana, wide leg, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, lunge, front of the space, creep and crawl, bend your right knee. Inhale, rise up, crescent, Anjaneyasana. Exhale, airplane your arms, swoop them down and back. Move with your breath. Inhale, crescent lunge, reach up. Exhale, open arm twist to the right. Inhale, crescent lunge, Anjaneyasana. Exhale, plant your hands, step back into high plank. Inhale here. Exhale, chaturanga, lower down. Inhale, upward facing dog or cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Beautiful work. Inhale together. Exhale, let it go. Let's push through the left side. Inhale, left leg high, three legged dog. Exhale, knee to nose, shift forward. Inhale, kick back, three-legged dog. Exhale, step through between your hands. Inhale, rise up, warrior two, heel to arch alignment. Exhale, settle in, sink it a little deeper. Inhale, reverse warrior, paint the sky, keep the bend in your left knee. Exhale, extended side angle, reach and tick tock. Inhale, rise up, five-pointed star, feet parallel. Exhale, prasarita, padatanasana, wide leg, forward fold. Drop your hands. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, lunge to the front of the space, creep and crawl, bend your left knee. So your right heel is lifted. Inhale, anjaneyasana, crescent lunge. Exhale, airplane your arms, swoop them down and back, chest hovers, left knee stays bent. Inhale, crescent proper. Exhale, open arm twist, draw your left fingers back behind you, keep extending from the top of your head. Inhale, crescent, front of the space. Exhale, lunge, plant your hands, step back, high plank. Here for an inhale, exhale, chaturanga, lower down. Inhale, upward facing dog or cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Awesome work, you guys. Take one breath here, downward facing dog. And hold for your exhale. Now using the strength of your core, walk your hands towards your feet. So you're coming into a forward fold at the back of your mat. Gaze is in between your legs, back behind you. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold, let it go. Root to rise, inhale, extended mountain, come to standing, arms overhead. Exhale, Tadasana, hands next to your side, palms face forward. All right, so we're moving into our balancing series of class. So stay standing towards the back of your mat, facing towards the front of the mat. I'm gonna come up towards the top and face the camera just for the sake of the video. And the first one we're gonna be doing is tree pose, Rikshasana. So we wanna start by rooting through our left standing leg here. That is going to be our foundation. That is going to be our tree trunk if you will. So lift your five toes from your left foot up and really root down. I've heard it been called the three corners of your feet or the four corners of your feet. Just find a good foundation through the sole of your foot and imagine literal roots growing into the ground as you lower each one of those five toes. Engage all the way up through your legs. So lifting right above your kneecap, Engaging through your hip here. Now find either kickstand with your right foot. You can bring your right foot up into your calf 
or to the inside of your left thigh here. Now, whatever you do, avoid putting your right foot directly on your knee. That is no good, either above or below, or do kickstand variation. So move into your tree, and then just bring your hands to heart center. So let's break this down. You have your roots growing into the ground. Engage through your left standing leg here. If your left hip is sticking out towards the left, guide it back in, plug it in through that left hip. Now let's focus here on the right side. Our right knee is bent. Work your right knee back behind you. You're gonna feel a little bit more opening through your right hip. Hands to heart center. Find one point of focus here, your drishti, an unmoving object that you can focus on. Find your breath. Now your option to grow your branches if you would like. We'll be here for just a couple more breaths. Holding in our tree. Still lifting through the top of our head as we stand tall. One more inhale. On your exhale, draw your hands back to heart center. One last breath together, inhale. Exhale, release out of your tree. Wonderful job, you can kind of pedal it out. Then we're gonna find that same thing on the other side. So lift the toes of your right foot, root down through the sole of your right foot, and then grow your roots down as you lower one toe at a time. Engage through your right standing leg, engage through that right hip, find your variation, either kickstand to your calf or to the inside of your right thigh. Be okay with where you're at. Maybe you draw your hands to heart center here, finding your drishti, your focus. Draw your left knee back behind you to open up through your hips. You are welcome to grow your branches if you would like. It allows you to expand your surface area here with your body. Keep lifting through the top of your head. Engage through your belly. Here for an inhale. Exhale, draw your hands back to heart center, bringing your thumbs to your chest. One breath together here in tree, inhale. And exhale, you can slowly release and pedal it out. Awesome job. So that was the first balancing posture. The second balancing posture we're gonna do is called Utita Hasta Padangustasana. It's a lot of words going on there in Sanskrit, but essentially what it means is I'm standing, I'm balancing, and I'm bringing my big toe to my hand. It could look like this, it could look like this, it could look like this. We're gonna move through all three of those steps. So again, like you saw me just doing, you can do that without any sort of props. I am very tight in my hamstrings and in my shoulders. So I find that a strap is useful in a posture like this because it really allows me to extend my foot out um, and still be upright within my body. And I'll show you that here in a second. So just come standing. Again, you're at the back of your mat facing the front. Now we're gonna root through our left standing leg again, and then just bend your right knee to 90 degrees. Your right toes are flexed. This is one-legged mountain, Ekapada Tadasana. So you can hang out here if you're building your balance. I'm still a little bit of wobbly, even when I'm just here in step one. Step two is gonna be grabbing for your big toe or your foot. So you can grab for your big toe, inside or outside edges of your foot and hang out here. This is step two. If you're still working on building your balance, maybe this is where you hang out. If you wanna take it further, we're gonna extend our right heel out in front of us. Now this is where the strap is coming in handy for me. I'm putting the strap on the ball of my foot and I'm finding my grip as close to my foot as I can, left hand to my hip. 
I'm rooting through my left standing leg, inhale, and exhale, kick out through your right heel out in front of you. So you're keeping your right toes flexed. Now using the strap allows me to draw my right shoulder back in space. Feeling strong through my left standing leg here for one more inhale. And exhale, maybe you open it up to the side. This is a variation. It is your choice. Take your steps where you're at. We're here for one more inhale. And then we'll release the same way we came back in, moving one step at a time. Bend your knee and release down to the ground. Woo! Nice job. Let's find that standing variation on the other side. So root down through your right standing leg. Left knee lifts and bends at 90 degrees. Ekapada Tadasana, step one. Step two, grab for your big toe or the inside or outside edges of your foot. Now, if you're using a strap, now would be the time to place it around the ball of your left foot. Here for an inhale. Exhale, kick out through your left heel in front of you. Now, draw your left shoulder back in space. Keep your left toes flexed. Keep engaging through your left thigh as it lifts. And if you want to find the fullest variation, kick it out to the side. Utita Hasta Padangustasana. Now, a variation here would be just to keep your left leg at 90 degrees out to the side. One more inhale, and then exhale, come back the same way you came into it. Nice work, yogis. Both balancing postures are good to kind of find our center. We're gonna move just a little bit more before we work into our peak posture of class. So virtual high five, awesome work. Seating at the back of your mat. Inhale, extended mountain, reach overhead. And exhale, fold forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, walk forward into a high plank. Now move through your chaturanga here. High plank, down to low plank. Upward facing dog or cobra. And exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, right leg high, three-legged dog. Exhale, step through to your right thumb this time. Sorry, my bad. We're coming in between your hands. So toe heel your foot in between your hands. Setting up warrior two. Inhale, rise up. Warrior two. Exhale, extended side angle. Reach. Tick tock your arms. Inhale, reverse warrior. Exhale, back to extended side angle. We were just there. So you can hang out here in extended side angle. We're going to work towards a peak posture of Ardha Chandrasana, which is half moon. So if you're moving into that, maybe have your block, if you're using a block, handy towards the top of your mat. So we're here, we're in our extended side angle. To move forward, you want to drop your left hand to your hip and toe heel your left foot in a couple of feet. You're finding a shorter stance with your feet. Now, as you do that, it's going to allow you to draw your fingers down to that crop, whether or not it's a block, can of soup, some books, plant your fingers on the top of the crop. Now you are going to lift your left leg as you straighten through your right. Standing on our right leg, left leg lifts as close to parallel as you can. Keep your left toes flexed. So you're balancing, you're extending out of the top of the head, you're expanding through your low body. Last step here is to lift up through your left arm, extended side angle, you're sorry, Ardha Chandrasana half moon. Big heart opener, big hip opener, and a balancing posture. One more breath. To exhale, slowly lower back into a warrior two. Inhale, reverse triangle. 
straighten your right knee, reach back, and exhale, cartwheel your hands, lunge to the front, step back into high plank, and move through your chaturanga. One of your last chaturangas of class, you have one more left, one last push. Inhale, left leg high, three-legged dog. Exhale, step in between your hands this time. Inhale, rise up, warrior two, root your right foot parallel to the back end of the mat, find your heel to arch alignment. Inhale, reverse warrior. Exhale, extended side angle. So hang out here if you would like. If you want to move forward, drop your right hand to your right hip. Toe heel your right foot in a couple of feet. This will allow you to draw your fingers down towards the crop. You're lifting your right leg as you straighten through your left. Bring your right foot about parallel as you can. Last step here. Open it up. Ardha Chandrasana, half moon. Now keep breathing here. Keep working the top of your head towards the front, stamping back through the sole of your right foot. Inhale. And exhale, slowly release back into your warrior two. Inhale, reverse triangle. And exhale, cartwheel to the front. Step back, high plank and move through your chaturanga, high plank. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, upward facing dog or cobra. And exhale, downward facing dog. Awesome work, yogis. From your downward facing dog, go ahead and drop to your knees. We're gonna take a seat towards the middle of our mat here. So extend your legs out in front of you. We're gonna to start to slow it down here. So we're gonna move into Paschimottanasana, which is forward fold. So make sure to release any real estate underneath your sits bones here. You really wanna find a good foundation through your hips. And again, lifting up through the top of your spine. That is a big theme through yoga is to keep lifting and lengthening through your spine. Now, if you tend to have low back pain or tight hamstrings or calves, go ahead and just find a little bit of bend in your knees to begin with. Toes flex towards your face. Inhale, reach your arms overhead. And exhale, hinge at your hips. Now, keep your spine long and straight. Keep your arms long and straight. Reach with your fingers until you grab maybe the sides of your feet, your ankles, your calves. Now you're not folding all the way forward. You want to keep lifting through your chest. Keep expanding and extending through your spine. And to take it deeper, bend through your elbows. Pull your chest over your thighs. One more round here. Now inhale, release, slowly walk your hands up your thighs, coming back into seated position. Now we're gonna take a twist right from here. So bend your right knee and then take your right foot to the outside of your left knee here. <clears throat> right hand kickstands back behind you. Inhale, lift up through your left hand, and exhale, twist to the right. So maybe you can wrap your left elbow around your right knee. Finding some traction. Again, lifting up through your head, using that kickstand and arm back behind you to keep your chest lifted, and then follow with your gaze as deep as you want through this twist. Now, if it's hard to breathe here through the front side of your body, take your breath back to the, to the back side of your body here, kind of breathing into where your kidneys are. One more inhale. And exhale, maybe twist a little deeper. Inhale, slowly come back to center. Slight counter twist to the left. 
and then straighten out both legs in front of you. Bend your left knee, draw your left foot to the outside of your right knee here. Extend your left hand behind you, inhale, reach up through your right fingers, exhale, twist to the left. Now maybe you can wrap your right elbow to the back of your left knee. If you can, almost use this as some traction to draw your left shoulder towards the back, maybe follow with your gaze. Breathing into the back side of your body here if there's compression on the front. One more round of breath. Inhale, slowly come back to center. Twist, counter twist to the right gently. And then release your feet out in front of you. Go ahead and bend your knees. Maybe scoot your hips forward a little bit. We're gonna come lying onto our back. So extend your hands out in front of you, slowly lower down one vertebrae at a time. Take a full body stretch here. Keep your feet out in front of you. Reach your arms back behind you. And curl up into a little tiny yogi ball. If there is any last posture that is speaking to you, maybe happy baby, maybe soup Tabata Kanasana by opening up your knees and then bringing the soles of your feet together, take any last posture that is speaking to you. Listen to your body. What is it calling out for? Do you need a little bit more hip opening or shoulder or heart opening? Do you need one last twist here? in a supine, a laying down position. Take that last posture as you will. Come back to your breath. Maybe you're finding that four count breath in. Four count breath, hold at the top. Four count breath, exhale. Your sama vritti, your equal Heart breath. Now slowly release out of that last posture and move into your final Shavasana here. So final Shavasana is where you're lying down on the mat. I always recommend your arms to be resting down next to your body. Now you have the option for your palms to be facing up. If you're looking to receive some energy, you want a little bit of inspiration, leave your palms facing up. If you're looking to ground your practice, ground your day, your weekend, find some stability beneath you, go ahead and root your palms into the earth. And then just back to your soft breath. Your inhales and exhales that fill up your lungs and your body. One of the postures that we did today, Rikshasana, tree pose. It helps us to find our roots, find our foundation. The quote I saw that really resonated with me. It says, be like a tree, stay grounded, connect with your roots, turn over a new leaf, bend before you break, enjoy your unique natural beauty and keep growing. So hang out here in your Shavasana as long as you would like. I do not think that we spend enough time in Shavasana. Usually as teachers, we have so many postures we wanna get in through class that usually we only get maybe a minute or two in our Shavasana. So hang out here in your stillness and silence and I will call you out when it is one o'clock. Relax your eyelids, 
Padma ready, allow your gaze to soften. Breathe deeply. Find space and length through your breath. So this time, inhale for five. And exhale for six. One more round. Inhale for five, four, three, two, one. And exhale for six, five, four, three, two, one. Eventually, you can stop counting your breath and just allow your breath to fall into its natural and easy rhythm. Do not force it, just let it be. Pay attention to your breath and compare it to its usual cadence as we were at the beginning of class. Tune into the rising and falling sensation in your body. thoughts arise, imagine them as the little tiny thought clouds that you see maybe in the comics or in the cartoons. Let it just float on by. But this allows us to acknowledge those thoughts, but not to react immediately. We see the thoughts arising, we see those bubbles forming, we acknowledge and then we let them float on by. We can come back to those thoughts in another time. Release your focus now and just simply be here. Remind yourself that there isn't anything to fix. There is nothing to do. There is nothing to change. There is nowhere else for you to be right now except for right here. This last minute of your meditation, think about something you are grateful for. And transition thoughts to how you feel physically. Are your muscles relaxed? Is the steadiness of your heartbeat slowing down? Feel that gratitude and that softness take over your body, permeating it off of your mat. Hang out here on your mat as long as you would like. The student in me honors and sees the teacher in each and every one of you. Namaste. Thank you so much for showing up for yourself today on this Saturday afternoon. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. We have another class coming up one more today at four o'clock and it's going to be a lovely flow too if you're looking to get your heart rate going a little bit more than this class did and we're here on facebook doing about four free classes a day and we're going to keep doing that till the studio opens up so let us know if you have any questions give me comments and feedback if you would like i love it but enjoy the rest of your afternoon see ya